Welcome to Married to Movies. Industry insiders John Russell and Tracy Kring live and work happily in cinema matrimony. They're sharing behind the scenes adventures of writing, producing, and appreciating films. Good morning, babe. Good morning, babe. What's going on? Oh, just breakfast. Just some breakfast. Just yeah. hanging out. Hanging out. You have relented, and we're going to go see Barbie uh, this week. Yeah, but I, I relented because it's the drive-in. Mm-hmm. And at the drive-in, everything's more fun. Oh, how annoyed do you get when people... With their lights? With their lights! They uh, turn on their lights! It's like, uh, ah! Oh, yeah. I can always tell when a person has never been to the drive-in or who rarely goes to the drive-in because... They always got shit with lights being on. What they got about, their trunks up too high. What about the ones that are parking in the spaces that are not assigned <clears throat> for their cars? Oh, whenever it's like these are for normal cars and yep. these are for minivans yes. and SUVs. Yes. And then a fucking minivan goes up there and tries to park in a car spot. Yes. Oh, I could I could smack the shit out of them. You could. But yeah, we're going to see Barbie because you have to. It's a cultural event. And um, I'm... Everything I've heard about it, I'm going to love this. I love satire. I feel like satire is such a um, <clears throat> underused method of uh, storytelling. Barbies were super important to me growing up. Right. They were absolutely my my friends, mm -hmm. my playmates. Right. I can't remember a time when they I... They taught you to be a storyteller. Well, yeah. I mean, we would... <laughs> We, I, I literally call them we. I had a favorite Barbie body. She actually came from a doll that was not a Barbie. I liked nuance. My favorite thing about my Barbie body that mm -hmm. I used, and I cut slits up the side, up the back of all my Barbie heads so mm -hmm. that they could fit on this body. Right. Um, but her hands would move, so it gave her a lot more. She could intonate things. She could really react to things with using her wrists and her hands. Mm -hmm. You know, when she would be like, talk to the hand or whatever. I don't think that was a word. I think that was like a word that you made up that was like the combination of like three other words. I don't think intonate is a word. I think there's imitate and there's innotate. But intonate is not a word. I think you made up innotate. Yeah, that's possible too. <laughs> Whatever. There's something. I got the idea. It's though. a good word. It is. It's a, it, intonate. Absolutely. I think it's an excellent word. I think I mean like she could intimate. Yeah, or intimidate. That that's, too. Oh uh, yeah, Barbie in her dungeon of love. I had a Darcy cover girl, and she, she was much larger than them, so she was always like the queen or like the ruler or whatever. She was just bigger. I, they may have had to be her sex slave, I'm just saying. But um, hot on Sundays on like NPR, in, in my area at least, and this is also in the 80s, they would do one complete concert, like classical concert on NPR, and... I wouldn't know who made the music. I wouldn't know anything in advance. I just knew that there was going to be about 20 or 30 minutes of continuous music. Right. And every morning I would wake up in time so that I could set up my Barbie scenes, <clears throat> whatever they were going to be. A lot of times they were in a kind of like... So you needed music for your show. I would invent the show and the story as the music went to the music. Wow. So if it got really slow and romantic, that's when the, you know, the love interest would show up. If it was like very dramatic, you know, it was like she was running up a hill and, you know, upset and looking out longingly over, you know, and I would use the back of a chair, the spindles of the back of a chair to be like a giant window in her house and like... <laughs> Oh yeah, I had, I had elaborate. Everything in my room served as something. But it was improvisational. Uh huh. In your world, did Barbie and Ken engage in sexual congress? Are you kidding me? I mean, that was probably seventy-five percent of the time. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so dumb. Do you remember that Warrant song? And he says, um, I come home late at night and you're in bed asleep. I wrap my arms around you so I can hear you breathe. No, I do not remember that song <laughs> at all. Um... Are we gonna are we gonna have that song playing? Heaven isn't this? too far away. Oh God! Yeah, not yeah. Now okay. that you say the chorus, I remember. Okay, <laughs> yes. so that was what happened. Right. Um. He would. They would fight. He would come home at night. Right. She would be in bed. Right. And I would play this song. These are kind of white trash Barbies, aren't they? They are. Yeah. I'm not gonna say they're, they're living not. a white trash life. Yeah. Yeah. Do do they do uh, John uh, John Bon Jovi? <laughs> No. On the no. <laughs> <laughs> no. They were like from New Jersey. <laughs> Total Jersey Barbies. The saddest thing was when I had that storage unit and I couldn't afford to pay to keep it up. Mm -hmm. And all of my boxes of my Barbies were in there. Yeah. We watched a movie last night. Just kind of like cruising around. You're looking for a movie. Um, we were looking in horror. Um, we started one movie and it ended It was up, weird. It was really, really weird. It was, I think it was called Agnes. But look, I kept saying, is this a comedy? I know. It It was like in the preview, it looked like, oh, this is, this is going to be kind of fun. And this is going to be But the way that scary. it was shot and edited, it looked like a comedy. And the acting? Well, there was a giant stuffed lion uh, in the first scene. And, it was, and then there was a guy who was... It was like he was supposed to look like the Pope. And it was just like, no, that's definitely not the Pope. It was like <laughs> it was like so weirdly cheap and, and fake looking that it made me think it was a satire. Which a horror satire about like nuns getting possessed, I, I think that has some possibility. But you didn't get that feeling at all from the trailer. No. So we found this other movie called Dash Cam. I've not heard a word about this movie. I had heard of it, but I didn't know anything about it. And when you <clears> looked up... It didn't have great ratings. No, no, it didn't. It's IMDb had a lot of Everybody really, really... It. And here, you know why they hate it? Why? Well, because they hated the character. Because why? she was this, like, MAGA, uh, really foul-mouthed. Mm. Uh, but <clears> I <throat> thought she was so funny. She, she was, was funny. She was funny. Fun and funny, and yeah, she had the she wrong idea. She had the wrong idea about everything. Look, look I <laughs> look, I don't mind dudes in in things get to be whatever they want to be. Right. I don't mind that we would show a conservative woman. Right, a very conservative woman who also she had a MAGA hat. I, here's the thing about her: I felt like she was very realistic. She was, uh, I know, very. Body, very foul mouthed, very, you know, huge pot smoking conservatives. Yeah. This movie really went nuts. I, I, I can't even describe the plot because there really was no plot. It was just like everything. No, it that, was one of those movies where you got to get one thing to another place. Yes, which you like those movies. Well, I appreciate their simplicity. It's just like, Go from point A to point B. That's all you gotta do. But she has like this show that people watch live. Right. So she's like doing uh really body, uh, really dirty. body dirty raps that she's doing over a beat uh live while live. while she's yeah. And people if they text anything in caps. And she'll one of say the it. really fun things on the on this that I, I you know would annoy some people is that there are all the comments on the side of everything that's happening. Okay, but I, I have one criticism here. You thought it was too far over. The people who... It's like a layer that's going on top of your video. Mm -hmm. And it's got all the commenters and everything. Right. The people who designed that, it was a great design. But you did not make sure that it would be on the screen, no matter what screen people were watching it on. Mm. Because some of mine was cut off on the edges. And okay. I feel like you spent all the time to give each person a profile picture. You spent the time to put like little tiny names. Like, don't let your artwork get cut off. I hear you. Keep it on the screen. <laughs> You're, I hear you. You're spending the time to create it. Keep it on the screen. Right. And and some of the comments that people were making, like when something horrible would happen in somebody's they would head. Make would they would make huge jokes. And like, oh, fake. And I mean, it was. The, the thing was live for the whole time. If Right? Well, yes. 
sometimes what they would do uh, on the show is that they she would lose signal. Right. And then you would just be into and and it was it was like a found footage kind of a thing. No, it, she was filming herself. Well, I know she yeah. was, but 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 in the sense that it was like all like, yeah, like Blair Witch without cuts and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, and you know the journey this thing takes mm. and the it was cra- great craziness of it. And oh it, God! And it was real. One of the things it was doing was grossing. It was out. really gory, it but was, like in a in one of those like eighties fun ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it it, it kind of reminded me of something like um like Dead Alive or something like that. Not they're, they're, no, not that silly. Well, not that silly, but you it's know, definitely like blood coming out of Johnny Depp's bed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blood. Yeah. It, all of the bodily fluids were represented at some point in this uh, yeah. film. Yeah, we're we're not going to describe all of them, but uh, it was if you weren't like shocked by what was happening uh, on the screen, you were shocked by what she was saying, or you were shocked by what you were seeing in terms of like some grossness. And she wraps the entire end credit. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff she says is very funny. I know. He, and here's what else is really interesting was that her character was her actual name. So it almost felt like kind of what we uh, did in our movie where because the person is interesting and a personality in Wheelies Incorporated, we were like, look, let's just use their names. Well, so her name is Annie Hardy and that <clears throat> is her name. And I, I uh, friended her on um, uh, Instagram. She yeah. doesn't have like, you know, I think she only had like, you know, 7,000 or 8,000 followers or something like that. But She's I think she, very cool. she was really good. Yeah. They were running full blast again, uh, away from something all the time. And then when it would get really scary, man, uh, there was a lot of jump scares. Yeah, it was like it was like zombie possession, demon, you know, craziness. It went fucking Yog Sogoth at the end. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, there were like tentacles and stuff. It was crazy, and really fun. <clears throat> well, my cousin. <clears throat> my cousin, she loves horror movies, and most of the time, I haven't seen a horror movie that she's not seen. Right. But I thought, I don't know, maybe she missed this one. So I texted her, like, holy crap, like, Dashcam Dash Cam has some terrible reviews. But I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> and it's gory and it's funny. And she said, oh, God, I love that movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's got so many things about it, you know, that you can grab onto. Yeah. I would just say, like, well, I mean, be aware. It's going to be violent. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be scary. But definitely check it out if you're a person who goes towards those things. Yes. Well, it, it, it's interesting what you uh, what you had said before, because it kind of reminded me of something that you had uh, brought up um, a couple of days ago, which is this idea that women can be <clears throat> so many things at the same time. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I made a note of it to myself because I actually, you know, sometimes you just articulate something. Right. Exactly how it, it, it it's going around in your head. Right. And it's usually pretty rare to be able to articulate something um, that way. So I actually wrote it down. Um, <clears throat> we were discussing at the time on a morning that we didn't do a podcast, which every morning that we don't do a podcast, we regret that we didn't do a podcast yeah. because we end up talking about something. Yeah. Maybe what we should do is record <clears throat> the mornings that we don't do a podcast. But then we're doing the podcast. But no. But see, look, listen, listen. Okay. This is like a side podcast. This is a side cast. Okay. You're going to start an OnlyFans? You're going to start a Patreon? That is a perfect idea. I'm I'm just wearing underwear right now, folks. Just to let you know. No, uh, we take are. those moments where right you, uh, bam. You're only wearing underwear. I know. That's and what they, you can do in a podcast. They have Christmas ornaments on them. They they do. They have. I have balls. I have balls on my balls. <laughs> <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle. You hear the sleigh bells ring. You don't put away your Christmas underwear. No, they're good underwear. I mean, cut, what? Does somebody just pull out their Christmas underwear? For Christmas? For just Christmas. <clears throat> what? Yeah. It's Are like, they putting their Christmas underwear, like, in their yeah, ornament box? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> like the first day of December, they get to pull out their Christmas underwear. It's like, oh, I got my Christmas underwear. I get to wear it now. Ew. Well, you wouldn't wear a Christmas like idea. sweater anytime other than December. Yeah, I understand that. But you're wearing your underwear. They're under your clothes. Okay, what difference does it make? What kind of underwear it is? <clears throat> Only thing is, is that women have to wear like really crazy, ridiculous underwear for guys. And so maybe they have like these, you know, uh, elf outfit that they have to put on. Well, I have a problem with saying that they have to wear it for guys. I I understand that. They don't have to wear it for guys. The only reason they would wear it is for guys. No, I have. That's really uneducated. Okay, okay. So you're saying that there are women that would want to wear the Victoria's Secret uh, elf underwear if it wasn't for guys or for their partner. Let's just say that. For their partner. Um, You're wearing it for yes, your... Yes, sir. You know what? <laughs> you fucking egotist. You, <laughs> you men. Oh, God. If I could round you all up and like clockwork orange your fucking ass and Agent Orange your fucking asses. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor, Movie Mode Merch, the graphic t-shirt store to outfit you for your next film set. Be the person wearing the t-shirt everyone asks, hey, where'd you get that shirt? Cast and crew alike love these inside jokes and filmmaking inspired designs. Check them out on Insta at Movie Mode Merch. Women (laughs) wear the underwear because it makes them feel a certain way. Okay. And that is powerful okay all right fair enough okay all right i understand you're actually i mean it's kind of like wearing a wonder woman costume it's like a badass thing a badass so when you see women sexy elf costume when you see women come out and present to their partners right this is a sign that they are ready to be a boss in bed okay this is not for them all right all right okay Fair enough. Co-opt. I know men like to co-opt women's emotions all the time, but you know that was really like ew, 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 ew to cringe, you. cringe ick to you. <laughs> I remember my dad uh, showed me Playboy, and he had said uh, at the top of Playboy it says entertainment for men and he said women are not entertainment for men. That really always stuck with me. So that that's the part of it that I was. Res- referring to, which is that women shouldn't feel like they have to wear the little elf costumes. But you're saying a lot of women want to wear the little elf costumes, and I think that that's fine. Well, I don't know about elf costumes. Well, we were referring to elves. That's what we were referring to as far as Christmas was concerned. you threw that in there. We started just talking about women. (laughs) We were talking about Christmas underwear, and then it wasn't. But You know what? But do you see my point? Do you see my point about entertainment for men? Okay, you're trying to redeem yourself, and I'll give you that. (laughs) Yes, I'm glad that we're not entertainment for you. Thank Thank you. you. There we go. But, on the other hand, yes, it does make you feel... Remember, you were wearing, like, you were wearing a little uh, t-shirt action and these kind of uh, uh, starred underwear... And I called you Wonder Woman. When was I doing Remember, that? Remember, no, it was you. You were, you, you had gone to sleep and you were wearing, like, I believe you're wearing the shirt you're wearing right now. And you're wearing the starred underwear. And it looked like the... Uh, I literally don't have underwear with stars on it. Let's drop your misogyny. <laughs> and let's move on to... I thought you said I redeemed myself. Okay. Um, You want to support the Barbie movie. So I think that's more redeeming. Um, it has so, uh, just wanted to point out that it has now become the uh, uh, most uh, financially successful film ever directed by a woman. I'm really happy for that. And I'm really happy about the signal that sends. Mm-hmm. And I'm really happy about Margot Robbie um, and the way that she championed that project. I love Margot Robbie. I think she is so great. I, I, I mean... She will be in things and it will be like, this is a piece of shit movie. But she's amazing. But she's like, yeah, like like uh, the Suicide Squad and, you know, her as Harley Quinn and all of that. I mean, she's, she's wonderful. She's the best thing in it. Oh, God, by far. Um, So we were talking about Oppenheimer and Christopher Nolan films in general. Right. And my general hatred of when men write shitty women. And I finally articulated this well enough that... that I thought it was it bared repeat. In the case of Christopher Nolan or men who write women shitty, 
it makes me really angry that they write them poorly okay. because they have mothers, they have sisters, right. they have girlfriends, they have great grandmothers, they have grandmothers, they have wives. They've they have, seen women. They have daughters. They under they have had the experiences They've of being lived with, with women right. from birth. And they have understood them none. Right. They have investigated them or been curious about their inner workings none. Mm -hmm. And that, that drives me insane. I agree. Uh, as far as when you're writing a female character, this is my advice. A woman can be anything she wants to be. Mm -hmm. If you want her to fall into the archetypes of women, the mother, the whore, the the nag, the vir the virgin, whatever. I'm saying that as the genres in which men typically right. write women. Right. They can be any of those things or anything they want to be as long as the female character is multiple things at once. Right. Because men write women one-dimensionally. Right. With one main attribute. Right. Just like in Dash Cam, she could be a MAGA Republican and a raunchy rapper and badass fighting this zombie demon. Yes. And, you know, and, and very funny brave as hell. And, and very, very funny. Exactly. Yeah. She could be multiple things at once. And, and that's the problem is like... When you only give us sandwiches to make. You oh, know, when, we're back to making sandwiches. When you take away our dimensionality, we're not even people. I had brought up to you The Godfather, which is probably, you know, our, The Godfather 1 and Godfather 2 are always in the top 10 movies of all time. Okay. I love Francis Ford Coppola. Absolutely adore him. But the women in both of those films are by far the most poorly drawn character. Oh God, yes. Every other character is such a mixed bag. They're so complicated. Michael Corleone, his arc is enormous. Well, and even when he's in his most evil states, he's he feels the conflict within him. Loving his brother, killing his brother. Yes, all at the same time. Right, the complexity is there. Always. But in the women, no. Michael's sister, she's she's like a dish rag in the first one. She's uh, kind of snotty and bitchy in the second one. And then she becomes his devoted uh, acolyte in the third one. And that's it. Well, even Kay, the, the Diane Keaton role, she starts off like as the virgin. Oh, no, no. Abalone is Abalonia. Abalonia is the virgin. It's definitely the virgin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think the most complex thing that happens in the Diane Keaton character is when she's talking to Michael about having the abortion. Yes. Which is the best scene that any woman has in The Godfathers. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's right. That's the speech in Jaws. Right. You know, with the doll's eyes. That That's the equivalent in right. The Godfather. I was thinking about, for instance, Rocky. Adrian is very complex. I agree. She's so complex. She is. She's a real person. Right. You know, and she... But she got less complex yes. as it went along. Yes. As she went along, she became more one thing or the other. In the first movie... Right. She's so beautifully complex. And she has such an arc. Beautiful arc. These movies, they're... You, you referred to uh, Christopher Nolan, you know, specifically. Yeah. And... I mean, you can go all the way through his movies and, and Interstellar, uh, you know, the Jessica Chastain part is just, it's its just not a sophisticated thinking. Well, emotional sophistication. It doesn't have it for the female characters, you know. It just doesn't. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not a huge fan of his films. I don't, I mean, I think he's a, a filmmaker who writes movies for boys. Mm -hmm. He really does. For their sensibility and the things that they like. I'm not saying women can't like it. I love Batman Begins. Mm -hmm. I love it. Right. Does it have any good female characters in it? Well, no. ac well actually, I think that his character in Batman Begins, uh, the one who uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal plays in the uh, second movie, right? Her his version of that character is better in Batman Begins than it is in the second movie. Right. But then you look at something like the newest Batman mm -hmm. um, with... Um, Robert Pattinson. Yes. And this 
this like Catwoman yes. was great. Uh, she was. Whereas like Catwoman in the other one was great too, I have to say. Right. But and Hathaway. Less less complex. No, and then I'm talking about Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, oh well yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer was just it was you know, Halle Berry a Catwoman? Halle Berry was Catwoman in a Catwoman uh Oh, in the movie. Yeah, in her movie Catwoman. Right, right. Yeah, but it's that's considered to be like one of the worst uh, films ever. But see, this this also <laughs> annoys me. And when you bring up something like the Barbie movie has made the most of any female director, it also annoys me that you know sometimes shitty movies like Barbed Wire or Catwoman or these female led movies. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like oh, you know, women couldn't possibly you know hold down a whole movie because. This movie didn't do well, right? right? Had the Barbie movie done poorly, it would have hurt women uh, in film again. That's that that is true, and that but is. But sometimes they're just shitty movies, and that is the definition of they're just shitty male privilege, yeah. which is men are allowed to fail. Oh God, men lose money for studios and lose money on films all the time, all the time, all the time, right? But, you know, if you're... And women have to celebrate. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! There's a woman that succeeded, you know, because if they don't succeed, then it's like, oh, it's going to hold them back. Nobody goes, oh, you know, oh, yay, oh, yay. James Cameron succeeded. That means men can succeed. The the freaking Twilight... That's some bullshit. The freaking Twilight movie that was a Catherine Hardwick... You know, directed. Right, right. I mean, she's a person who's an amazing director, had a great... I mean, her films make bank. Right. And that mm. Twilight movie made bank. Oh, yeah. All of them did. Okay. And they made it really cheap. It wasn't like they gave her a lot of money. Right. You know, she made bank on that film. And then they replaced her down the line with men. I did not know that. Yeah, so she... because it started to become too actiony, and men needed to direct now. Oh, man. That's some bullshit because... I mean, you know, all all, all you got to say, uh, I can't think of her name. It's it's another one of the Catherines, but she's the one that did Point Break. Bigelow. Yeah, yeah. Catherine Bigelow. She did like Point Break. She did uh, Near Dark. She did uh, uh, Strange Days. I mean, unbelievable action movies. Well, and she's just got good taste, man. Yeah, look at this. Catherine Hardwick, Bill Condon, David Slade, Chris Weitz. Those are the, all the ones that did the... Uh, I mean, come on. One woman. Right. In the Twilight movies. Do you know, though, that that one woman... Okay, this is the shitty thing. She set up all of the things. Not just not just that, but... What it was going to look the, like. Two of, of the, the greatest, two of the greatest actors... Who have come out probably in the last 20 years. She cast in those movies with Robert Pattinson Do you know and how Kristen hard Stewart. You it... know how awesome those two are? Uh, no. And do you know how hard it would be to, to translate a book that popular to the screen and give people exactly the characters they wanted? Absolutely. We, somebody had AI recently... Um, read Twilight and give a representation of who the characters were. And it was basically Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. (laughs) I mean, like, but she set that franchise up. Mm -hmm. That franchise was set up on the backs of women. And then men come in and cash in. It's infuriating. Yeah. If they did a Barbie sequel, I'll bet you somebody would say, well, what if a guy directed it? I mean, that's just the kind of bullshit stuff that, you know, guys come up with. So women can be not just one thing, not just two things. They, they can be 10 things. Dude, they can I'm be 20 like, things. I'm like 30 things in an hour. You are, big. You are, <laughs> I, big. In I this podcast. I'm practically <laughs> schizo. I'm I'm trying to do and be so many things. I know, Bib. I know, Bib. And, and all of the things that you are, I love you. And if you want to wear that little elf costume later, I'm fine with that. I don't have an elf costume. But you do have a Wonder Woman costume. Well, I guess I can approximate one. I like it. If you want to get me some underwear with stars on them. That's right. What about the invisible lasso? It's invisible. No, no, no. No, That's the invisible jet. It's the lasso of truth. Oh, I fucked it up. Oh, I I was trying to be sexy and it's an invisible lasso. I... I can't find the invisible lasso. Where did it go? 
I'm more than happy to own a lasso of truth. <laughs> okay, baby. I think that would come in real handy. All right. Not necessarily with you, but I would want to wrap it around certain people. Okay. Well, I'm glad we did the podcast. I, I wasn't sure what we were going to talk about. You said we didn't have anything to talk about. I was wrong, man. But this is what would happen. We wouldn't have recorded this, and we would have talked about this st- same stuff, and then we would have said, this would have made a good podcast. Okay, I can't argue. Don't argue with that. It's hard not to get romantic about movies. Thanks for listening to Married to Movies. John and Tracy will meet you for breakfast tomorrow. Thanks to our sponsor, Movie Mode Merch. Comfortable graphic tees made by and for awesome filmmakers to wear on set and off. Check them out on Insta at Movie Mode Merch. <laughs>